In your smart contract projects, if you want to represent fungible asset, the token standard you need to choose is ERC20. Instead of writing your own implementation of the ERC20 token standard, it's safer and faster to use the implementation of OpenZeppelin. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an ERC20 token with OpenZeppelin. Hey, I'm Julian, and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach how to become a blockchain developer and get your first blockchain job. So this is a Truffle project. I've already installed OpenZeppelin with NPM. And next, I'm going to create a file for my ERC20 token. Let's open our new file. I specify the version of Solidity. Then I import the ERC20 smart contract from OpenZeppelin. Then I create a smart contract for my token. And I'm going to inherit from the ERC20 contract of OpenZeppelin. And that's all I need to do. Now you can call all the functions of the ERC20 token standard on my smart contract because it inherited from the ERC20 token of OpenZeppelin. Next, you probably want to attach some metadata to your token. So for that, we can use another contract of OpenZeppelin, which is ERC20 detailed. And the way you're going to combine this with what we've imported previously is by also inheriting from this contract. So in Solidity, it's possible to inherit from several smart contracts. And for that, you need to use a comma. So here we specify our second contract. By the way, the order of declaration is important here. You need to first inherit from ES20 and after ES20 detail. And once you've done that, then you need to define a constructor. So the constructor is what's going to be called when your token is deployed. So our constructor doesn't take any argument. However, we can call the constructor of one of the parent smart contract. So in our case, we're going to call the constructor of ERC20 detailed. And we're going to give it three value. The first one is the name of our token. So this is a string. So for example, my token, then the symbol of the token. So for example, I am TN. And finally, the number of decimal of our token. So in most cases, we want to like for ether that is 18. By the way, if you are not clear of uh, what's the make, how a uh, ERC20 token works and what is this decimal thing, then you can check out this video of my series of on Ethereum tokens. So now with all this metadata attached, it's possible to call three new functions on your token, the name function, the symbol function, and the decimals function. Next, if you want to make your token burnable, that means that it's possible to destroy some coin, then you can use another contract of OpenZeppelin. So that's ES20 burnable. So in this case, you're going to add this ERC burnable. And now you have access to a new function, which is burn. And you have to pass the number of token that you want to burn and it's going to burn the token for the sender of this transaction next you probably want your token to be mintable so that means that at any time you can create a new coin so for that there is another token called erc mintable and so now you have a new function defined on your smart contract so that's the mint function and the first argument is the address that will receive the new mine coin. And the second argument is how many tokens you want to create. So of course, not everybody can call this function because otherwise that would be too easy. Anybody could create as many coins as they want. So only the address that deploy your token will be able to call this function or if you want to delegate this responsibility to another address you also have access to a function called add minter and so here you can pass the address of the minter like this and after once the administrator of your contract so that means the first person who deployed the contract added a minter, then this minter is able to call the mint function. 
Next, maybe that you want to allow new token to be minted, but up to a maximum value. So in other words, you want to cap the amount of token that can be created. There is another smart contract of OpenZeppelin that can help you, and that is called ERC20 capped. So in this case, you're going to also inherit from it. And we also need to call the constructor of this smart contract. So you can actually call several constructor. So after the first constructor here of ERC20 detail, then we specify that we want to call the constructor of ERC20 capped. And we're going to pass the maximum amount of token that we want to mint. So for example, if I pass 1000 here, I can only mint up to 1000 token. If I try to mint more token than this, then it's going to throw an error. Next, you might want to implement a post feature in your token. So with a post feature, when your contract is post, it is not possible to transfer token or to change the allowance for a specific spender. So for that, you need to import ERC20 posable and you inherit from it. And then we have some extra function defined on this contract. So you have the pose function. You can also unpose. It's also possible to know if the contract is posed or not with the posed function. And you, of course, in order to call these two function pose and unpose, you need to have special privilege. So if you are the address that deployed the contract, you have this privilege. Otherwise, you need to get granted this privilege. So the admin of the contract or another poser can call the add poser function. And here you specify the address of the poser. There is also an alternative implementation of ERC20, which is called safe ERC20. So actually the way it works is so first you import safe erc20 so here i'm going to create another token my token 2 is safe erc20 so it works the same way as the erc20 token except that when you call when you do a transfer of token it makes sure that the recipient if this is a smart contract it needs to know how to handle token because sometimes people send token to other smart contracts that don't know how to handle token and then the, the, the tokens are locked in this contract. So with safe ERC20, then you, uh, you will not have this issue. Another thing that can be interesting to do is to interact with another smart contract with another token from your token. So for that, what you could do is import the interface of ERC20. So that's called IERC20. And then in, uh, in your ERC20, so let's create a function foo here. If you want to interact with another ERC20 token, then you use the interface of the ERC20 token, then you pass the address, so 0x, whatever, and then you can call all the function of this other token, like transfer, uh, etc. So if you wonder how comes I know all these tricks, I've actually looked inside the Git repo of OpenZeppelin at this address. So if you want more info, you can check it out. So with ERC20 tokens, you can represent a fungible asset, but there are many assets that are actually non-fungible, and for that, you need to use the ERC721 tokens. And in the next video of this series, I'll show you how you can create an ERC721 token with OpenZeppelin. I'll see you there.